Welcome back to another Reaper blog tutorial. I recently got the Behringer X-Touch control surface. This is a eight fader plus master track uh, control surface for mixing in Reaper. It's a fantastic control surface with multiple methods of connecting to Reaper. I'm gonna go through these different methods in separate videos. And this video will be about the default built-in functions and what you could expect if you don't want to do any coding or customization at all, this is what you get. In future videos, we'll look at third-party extensions made by Reaper users that provide a lot more function and a lot more context-sensitive options. But for now, let's dive into setting this up. All right, so I've made my USB connection and power connection. I'm going to hold down the channel one select button and then press the power button. This is the config setup. You only need to do this once. We want this to say mode MC and IFC USB. It may also say MIDI or network. We want that on USB if we're using the USB connection. When we're done, we press select again and that saves those settings. Now over to Reaper, we're going to set this up as a control surface. So that's preferences, scroll all the way down to the bottom, control OSC web, click on add, then Mackie control universal, MIDI input, Behringer X-Touch INT, MIDI output, Behringer X-Touch INT. The other settings here we can ignore. As I did that, the faders came to life, matching the positions in my mix. You can also see the clock is showing information about the project. At this point, I have panning for each channel in banks of eight with record enable, solo, mute, and select buttons. Select follows my selection in the project. So if I click a track and select it, the green select light comes on. And if I jump to another track with a mouse, that jumps to over here. I can press the record enable button, solo, mute, and select. And you can see that happening on the first track. All these functions happening just to the selected track. And unlike um, working with Reaper with entirely with the mouse, where if I have three tracks selected and I press the solo button, they'll all select at the same time. With the control surface, it's only to the touched track, which is a benefit, maybe a downside, depending on your use case. That's how it works on this one. If we look at the select buttons, in this mode, pressing select just selects that track. It doesn't clear any other selections, and you cannot, let's say, press shift and select from track one to track five, you would, would need to click on each one individually. Not a huge problem, but maybe that's something that you would want. While there are things like shift, option, control, and alt buttons, in this mode, they do not function that way. So below those buttons, we've got the main track faders. They move nice and smoothly and quietly when motorized, and that's setting our track volume. And as you can see, as I move my hand over the fader, it is adjusting that volume and it's nice and smooth, no lag or anything like that. It's not jumpy, it just works. For panning, I can turn this knob and move in about 2% increments. If I tap in the button, that's gonna reset that. There is no option to adjust the width control or multiple pans at once, but there is an option to flip. And now my faders are controlling the panning and the knobs are controlling the volume, which is a pretty cool option. So I'm gonna do this for tracks three, four, and five at the same time. I'm controlling the pans. Switching over to the mixer view can see my pans moving for those three tracks. And if I want to flip back, I press the flip button again, and are going back to the panning. I'll just tap those buttons to reset. Coming over to this other main section, this kind of center console section, 
a lot of this stuff is not connected to anything by default. We can, and I will show that later. For now, there's a lot of buttons that do not have any function. Starting at the top, this whole row of six buttons, not connected to anything. The display slash name value button doesn't do anything as far as I can tell. And then this button over here will change the modes for the time display, which is pretty useful. So let's set this to bars, beats, and ticks. Global view works with track visibility. In Reaper's mixer, there's a button called clickable icon for folder tracks to show hide children. And if I click on that button, that will hide the tracks that are within folders. We can make our control surface follow that function with the global view button. So I'm gonna go over to overhead. Right now we're seeing all tracks. So there's 17 tracks in the project. I can fader bank over a few times. If I press the global view button, now we're just seeing what is visible. And if I bank over, there's no other tracks. It only has the seven visible tracks that is currently in my mix. So that function follows the folder show hide, also the, uh, the track manager show hide functions. That global view will switch between showing every track in the project or just what's visible in the mixer view. From there, these buttons here aren't currently assigned to anything. These are available for us to change. It's free real estate. The function keys by default are not assigned to anything. Again, we can assign these to anything we want, but I will show you one function that can be pre-configured. So going back to the control surfaces setup and editing, there's this option map F1 to F8 to go to markers. And with this function on, the function buttons will go to markers number one through eight. Personally, I'm not gonna use that function. I would rather have all of those buttons, those eight buttons assigned to my favorite functions, maybe adding in plugins or uh, different mixing functions. I would prefer to have those buttons available. So that's that option. The four modify buttons, they don't do anything. The automation buttons do work. The selected track is on read. I can change that to write, trim, touch, latch. The latch preview mode, which is exclusive to Reaper, isn't available, and this group button does not have a function. In the utility section, there's save and undo. Those do work with Reaper. The cancel and enter buttons do not. Marker adds a marker at the current position. The nudge button, I couldn't find that it did any function at all. Cycle turns on loop playback. Drop doesn't have a function. Replace doesn't have a function. Click and solo. Uh, that's the metronome and clearing all solos, and I find that to be a pretty helpful function. So if I had several tracks selected or uh, soloed, I could press the solo button here, and then the solos would all clear. Very helpful. Rewind and fast forward buttons, they navigate by markers or uh, regions or time selection or uh, start end of project. Very helpful. So let's look at that in the main view. So hopefully you can see my edit cursor moving, or you could at least see the, uh, the time position moving. And I'm gonna move my edit cursor here using the, uh, the scrub function on the controller. And I'll put my cursor here. I'll press the marker button. And now I've got a marker that position, move it over a bit, press marker again. And if I use the forward and back buttons that will jump to those positions. So we got the stop button, the play button, the record button. The, those do the functions that you would expect. Fader bank moves all faders in chunks of eight. The channel button does one at a time, left and right. Then we've got navigation buttons here. Up, page up, page down, page left, page right. That's just scrolling your screen in chunks. If you press the middle button, that makes these affect zoom. Not the zoom app, but zooming your project. So pressing up with the zoom enabled increases track height or vertical zoom. And pressing right zooms in, pressing left zooms out. And I'll just show you with page up and page down. So that's a page up, that's page down, page right, moving my project in big chunks.
basically the the um, by the amount that is visible on the screen at once. I like those functions a lot. So that's what's built in by default. Those functions are already assigned and cannot be changed. There's a lot of buttons there that are still assignable. Let's look at how you do that next. Heading back over to the preferences, this time we're gonna go to the audio page, then MIDI devices. And we're gonna find that Behringer X-Touch INT. And we're going to right click and enable input for control messages. So that should say control only now. We don't need to do the output because Reaper isn't going to feed back any information to the hardware. Now everything that we want to assign is going to be done through the action list. One action that I've already assigned in the setup, set volume of selected tracks to zero dB. I've assigned it to the track button. So if I have a track selected in the mixer, let's actually do a couple of these. Three tracks selected there, I'm gonna press the track button and that reset my faders to zero. Personally, I find that useful. Maybe you won't, but uh, that's just one example of something that you can change here. So let's find another function. Let's say latch preview, and that will be uh, set track automation mode to latch preview. I will press on the add button. The MIDI learn or keyboard learn button comes up. I'm gonna press the group button on my controller. So that sees the MIDI CC that is being spit out by the Behringer and I can press OK, and now that is assigned. If I have track selected, press the group button, that's now assigned it to latch preview mode, which works with all the other modes on this controller. So I can go to trim mode, right mode, latch mode, touch mode, and read on off there, which is great. That's going to save a lot of time um, going in, in and out of the different modes. It's nice to have all those modes there. How about a button just to show and hide the mixer in Reaper? That's a simple one. That action is view toggle mixer visible. I'll click on add, and then I'll assign that to the F1 key on the Behringer, which is MIDI CC 54 on channel 16, and press okay. Now, if I press that button on the controller, you can see that toggles the mixer visible. All right, so let me show you how much faster it is to actually mix with a control surface versus mixing with the mouse. I'm actually, mixing with the mouse is too slow. I'm not gonna show you that. You, you probably already understand that. So I'm gonna start off by just pulling down all the faders in my mix. So I'll bring up my, my uh, drum folder to Unity and I'll press play. I've got cycle on and I can start mixing this. I'm going over to my percussion folder, bring that up, bring up the clap. Bank to the right and then bring up bongo woodblock shaker tambourine. And I'll bank over to the to the left and get my percussion folder and bring that down overall. Feels good there. Let's move over to the bass. Telecaster. And then I need that delay for the guitars. So let's write some automation. Let's say for the bass track, we'll do a bit of a vocal ride sort of thing on the bass track. So I'm going over to 
the bass track, which is my fader number five. I'm gonna select it and unselect the other tracks. I will press my touch mode. This is a touch sensitive controller, so we can write automation. And so as this plays back, I can touch this parameter and write it. And that's basically it. You can assign a lot of different functions to this as long as they are toggles or one-shot sorts of actions. None of the faders can be reassigned, none of the knobs can be reassigned, but you can still do a lot with that and it's very easy. It's as easy as assigning a keyboard shortcut, no different than that. This is a great way to start with the control surface, but if you want a lot more control, if you want control over how the faders function in different views, if you want control over the color of the lights, if you want to have the lights feedback, um, so when you press something, you know which mode you're in, things like that. All this requires extensions. Most likely that's going to be the CSI extension, but I'm interested in checking out some of the other options as well. So if you are brand new to control surfaces, hopefully this has been interesting. If you've got a Behringer X-Touch, hopefully this has been extra interesting and stay tuned for more videos about control surfaces. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.